What's going on guys? Welcome back to Idea Studio where we look at life in Bangkok through the lens of design. I'm Dana. I'm Jet. And this is episode three of our Exploring Bangkok by the BTS series. You can see we have a station behind us and that is all the way south here. We're still in Samuprakan and that is Prakasang. Prakasa. Prakasa. Yes. Oh, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're out here at Prakasa and if you guys have been watching the series, you know that one of the things we've been talking about is that all of these stations are along a Klong. And so this is actually the last one on the Klong where the Klong is directly at the station. So next week you'll see it'll be a little bit different landscape and we'll see how that changes the way that the neighborhoods are laid out and designed here in uh, Samuprakan in Bangkok. So we're going to look around this area today. There's not a ton, but this is a very commercial area. It's built up. There's a big C. There's a Robinson Plus. A condo. A lot of condos. We're at a market right now. There's a lot of things here, and it's going to be really interesting. This is sort of the first, the first step into a more urbanized area along the BTS. So let's go check it out. You guys know that I love seeing bikes and scooters used for last mile transportation, especially to get to the BTS. It's one of my favorite things. So right across from the BTS station, you guys can see the Robinson on the other side of the Klong. Huge shopping center, huge lifestyle center. And right next to that is this massive condo. This thing's huge. It's the only condo right on Sukhumvit in this area. And it's pretty nice looking. And right next to that condo is this market, which is a really cool sort of night market. It's actually called the Black Market, I guess because all the booths are black, but a fun play on words. Jib was feeling a little hungry, so we stopped at the one shop that was open and got some boat noodles. And this bowl of noodles was packed with everything. Tons of meat, tons of noodles. I'll throw a card up above to the short we made about it. Jib loved it and it was a great value. This Robinson's pretty massive. Of course, they have a ton of parking in front and there's actually like seven times as much parking in, in the back. And you can't have a Thai shopping center without tuk-tuks and motorcycle wins. Of course, there's a spirit house here in the Robinson parking lot. And this one has like a Ganesh for some reason, but it also has tons of red Fanta and red nectar, which I always get a kick out of. And we saw this little mini Godzilla guy hanging out on our way back out to Sukhumvit, and he scurried off back into the Klong. And this is the last BTS station on this Klong, or where this Klong is directly on Sukhumvit. But one of the things that you'll notice is that this Klong is very much sort of a working Klong here as well. People are still living their life around the Klong and using it to sustain themselves as part of their living. You can see this person here is collecting recyclables to probably sell or to use in some other way on the secondary economy. This is a very common activity you see around Klongs, even in Bangkok. And here, this uncle was fishing in the Klong. Jib talked to him for a little bit, and I guess he comes a few times a week to try to catch fish to make lunch or dinner to cook. Here, he was actually showing us his catch for the day. He caught a few already, and he was trying to catch more. I'm not sure I would fish in this Klong, but to each their own. And it wasn't long before some infrastructure issues reared their ugly head. This is a big reason why drinking water in Thailand leaves the facility drinkable, but the transportation and distribution network for that water compromises it. This demoed lot highlights the juxtaposition of this neighborhood. The Robinson and condo building visible in the background through this demoed lot with an old wooden house visible right in the back. Just a used refrigerator shop on the side of the road across from a bunch of other shops. Old school shop houses just hanging out, doing their thing.
These sandbags were the first indication that flooding is a major issue here. Keep that in mind because this will be relevant later. I absolutely love these wooden tie houses, this old school wooden tie house. This one, not so much, but to each their own. It is baller though. Obviously some truck drivers live in the area, which makes sense as this is really an industrial area. As does someone who really likes motorcycle helmets. And then out of nowhere, this beautiful, modern concrete home. This thing is gorgeous. I love this style. It seems to be incredibly well built, just beautiful but very much out of place when you realize that its neighbors are wooden houses like this or smaller concrete homes. After walking for a while, we came across this school which we could see for quite a ways away because they had this tower that is pretty visible. It's only four stories high, but very visible in this area. Not far from the school was a lot of very rural land. This person had a sign that asked not to dump more wooden tie houses, this sort of classic architecture, and a little clong. You can even still see the school's tower in the distance from here. Another great wooden tie home as well. I love this style where it's open on the bottom, you live up top. And man, what's with all the motorcycle helmets on fences and posts in this neighborhood? And if you're wondering, this cart is selling rats to eat. So most likely field rats. He's either selling them raw so you can cook them at home or grilling them for you. The uncle that owned that rat cart came out and talked to us. He didn't want to be on camera, but he wanted to talk to us about how this invasive water lily species has clogged up all their clongs. So even a little bit of rain floods their whole neighborhood up to a meter. As we made our way out to Tetsuban Bangku Soi 29, there was a lot of new construction and buildings undergoing renovation all while the Robinson Lifestyle Center and that new condo loom in the background. Out on Tanam Prakasa, there was another condo building, but also a thriving local economy with all these shop houses and small businesses. However, the food and beverage sector is not done as well during the ye old situation. This seafood buffet looks like it's been closed for quite some time. Not the healthiest looking open waterway we've seen recently. And when we made it back up to Sukhumvit, we came across this cool little elephant shrine right on the clock. Hey guys, so I had actually thought that we were gonna find a lot more going on at this location, at this BTS station especially because Sukhumvit was so built up. The Big C, the Robinsons, the little shopping center, everything was in place to have these huge communities built up around that on the BTS, and it just isn't there yet. Now you saw on the first side that there's still a lot of infrastructure issues. The roads aren't in that great of shape. A lot of buildings are in disrepair. There's a few that have been knocked down and they have that issue with the Klong being overgrown, which causes flooding. And you saw those indications of flood prevention with the sandbags in front of one of the houses. So we know that happens quite frequently. That's still an issue there. When we go over to the other side of Sukhumvit, you'll see about the same level of development. The interesting thing is though, like the other stops that we've been to already in this series, that side of Sukhumvit is far more industrial. It's not as residential. And it's more blended than some of the other ones, but it still has an industrial sort of leaning. Anyway, I just wanted to jump in with that thought because I was going through the edit and I realized like, you know, this not as built up as I thought it would be. So anyway, let's get back to the other side of Sukhumvit. Check that out. Yeah. 
yet another old Thai phone booth. I just love these things, so nostalgic. This is a cool little door here on Tessabong Bong Pusoy 20. And uh, some street food vendors. This one just giving a dog some shade and a Samtam auntie. Directly across from an old wooden Thai house. This apartment building has a secret. Did you catch it? This cool old mini. I wish it wasn't covered. I'd love to take a closer look at this thing. I love these cars. Very basic but typical Thai industrial architecture. These buildings are generally used for factories or for storage. Another empty lot waiting to be developed. Check out this hanging garden in these gourds. They're huge. I don't know if this is a house or something else, but I laughed a bit too much when I saw a castle in the middle of nowhere, Thailand. These are some of the same buses that we saw at the Sumetrakan bus depot in episode one. I'll throw a card up above. If you've been in Thailand long enough, you know that all roads lead to 7-Eleven. But don't worry, that's not our destination. We have something more tasty in mind. This is the Nijuko Cha Cafe. As you can see in the background, it's also a laundromat. And that's fine because they have good coffee, good cake at very reasonable prices. What more could you ask for? I'm gonna let Jib enjoy this cake and her coffee and use that time to show you around this cafe. Before heading home on the train, we stopped at the garden center at Big C because Jib wanted to grab a new hanging plant for our garden, and they had tons of choices. There were probably five or six different flower shops or garden shops in the area. However, right as we were making our purchase, it started to rain, and we decided it was best to just hurry back to the train and get home. If you've never experienced tropical rain, it comes in fast and the downpours are incredibly heavy. That's why we get so much flash flooding here in Southeast Asia. A storm like this might last anywhere from 20 minutes to a few hours and will drop more rain than most parts of the US or Europe will get in a month. You know, it's easy to blame all the flooding that we get in Bangkok on poor infrastructure but how do you build infrastructure to deal with rain like this that comes in so quickly and so ferociously? We hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please like and subscribe and share this video. We'd appreciate it. We'll see you guys at the next station.